Welcome to Sodo Creations where we make your imagination a reality. Today I have a lot going on, a few projects to accomplish. First, I need to design a backdrop for a couple. Their wedding is coming up here in three weeks or so. But I decided since I have a bridal show this weekend, I'm going to put together their floral arrangement and use that as well for the bridal show because it's more of a rental item because I customize, but I have, I'm planning to do like a base and then customize depending on the customer. I'm at the event center currently. I'm trying to drape my event center as well so I can take some pictures to post on the website. So several things going on. I think I could drape it, use the backdrop as also pictures and get the ballroom set up. I'm in the ballroom right now. I'll show you working on we set up the dance floor yesterday that will be in my ballroom video when i do the event space stuff but i'm trying to do a backdrop but we have this garage door right here if you remember from the video i can't i don't know if you will but this will all be in the ballroom update i had i have a garage door right here you can kind of see it at the top and another one here we decided to put the wall up because there were three black garage doors we decided to put these two walls and close the space in so that is what it looks like right now we kept the one garage door so if we have events that are indoor outdoor that we want to do setups for there's that garage door that we can open up and it's easy however because I'm setting up the space for a mock wedding eventually I'll put tables and chairs right there but today's video is about this floral arch first i'm gonna drape this back part you can see already my metal posts are there i just want to cover up this garage door and the easiest way for me to do that is with drapes so i have three i'm also gonna do a backdrop on the stage where the couples are gonna sit so i'll put my two throne chairs back on the stage and wrap those for the pictures I'm starting by covering that garage door because obviously we don't want that look. That's not what we're going for for this design or this setup. You can see that I had two other garage doors on either side of this one and I got them to build a wall to cover but we did want one garage door open in case we want to plan or have indoor outdoor events so we can still open this and have access to the full ballroom from outside i'm using my pipe and drape kit i've seen this in several of my videos i use this for balloons and drapes and this one in particular i love because i can raise it up to 14 feet and my my cross bars go up to 10 feet tall I initially used the sheer voile fabric that you see me putting away and I realized it was too transparent for what I'm going for so I go now with my four-way stretch white fabric I love this fabric for draping because it soups very well the soups look beautiful when you design with it so I always use this for those designs so I'm trying to get more. I just bought some more recently because I initially thought I was going to have to drape that whole back wall. But since I don't, I have enough to make several designs and do other things with. You always need the white in my opinion. So I'm fitting all these in. I know some of you have asked me where I get my pipe and drape. Those are from CV canvas etc.com and you ask about the fabric i get that from cv linen so i'll link that below some people ask sometimes it's already linked sometimes i just forget to link it but i'll try to link those below another thing with the draping you want to make sure which is crucial that when you're draping you take time to even out all your panels i'm using five white panels they're each 60 inches long or wide and i got the 15 foot tall ones because i knew i had a higher height 
to go this time around and that's what i usually buy just because i have room to soup with larger backdrops and also raise it up so it's better for me to just spend the money and get the longer ones because you roll it you can roll it up anyways in the back than to get short ones and then i'm stranded so i'm raising each one another good thing about these uprights are that they are edged so as you're raising it up you have numbers on the side so you're able to tell and you don't have to keep stepping back to see if your backdrop is even I've straightened everything out so that it's even and you don't see any seams in between. Now we're going to work on our stage draping, which is the main reason for this video. Again, starting with our uprights, I think this time I'm about eight foot wide. I'm going to start with my heavy duty shimmer drapes. I love this for a first layer of my backdrop. They're thicker, not quite thicker, but heavier fabrics. So I use that in the back because I don't have to soup the back, but it gives a good shine and they're not see-through. So these are perfect to add on to drapes. You can also add these like in the middle of a design where you don't have to really soup or on the very ends to add some more dimension to your drapes. But I put this, I'm gonna use five on this backdrop Again, even everything out before you think of adding your second layer. Our second crossbar, I'm going to put the white fabric as well. So we're going to slide that through. I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting the right side through there. We're going to slide each panel through and also work on evening everything out. If this is your first time tuning in, I create videos on how I do either mock setups or take you along with me when I'm decorating for several events. So if that's something you're interested in, check out my other videos. We do balloons, florals and drapes and do full setups for the events. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. That really supports me and I appreciate you guys. Um, Thank you so much. So now I'm taking off this gold heavy duty back uh, fabric because I realized I don't have enough to do the design that I'm wanting to go for. Today I'm freestyling because I just wanted something to be placed on the stage. I didn't want people who come in to check out the venue to just see a blank stage just there. I wanted to give people an idea of how they can set up the venue or we can set up the venue for them. So I'm replacing the gold that I took off with another white panel. So now I have, I think it's four, eight of the white total. When you're doing drapes, you want to make sure it's an even design, especially if you have a design that is equal on both sides where at the half point. So I always measure with the tape my midpoint and then I'm going to use my painter's tape to mark the center point. And once I mark the center point, I can cover it up as long as I know my drapes meet right at that center point. Sometimes I actually have to measure every single panel depending on the design I'm going for. But because this is a quick setup just to cover up this panel, I'm not doing that. These are my drape caps. I call this my backdrop shoulder pads. I'll show you how I do that or I'll link a video of how I do that in the description below because I did not really, I've shown it before so I figured I could refer you to that video if you're interested in knowing how to make those caps. They're kind of tedious depending on the fabric you use, especially those thicker fabrics but I show a close up I think in that video of how I make them. Now we're moving our fabrics out of the way so we can start the design process of the drapes. I use either pipe cleaners or 260 cube balloons to tie my drapes together. So I'm prepping my pipe cleaners by connecting two pipe cleaners together on the ends and that will allow me to tie the drapes once I have it all pleated. So I'm prepping a few because sometimes you can't let go of the fabric and you need to just grab the pipe cleaners and tie. I'm taking a final look, making sure that my 
pleats are even and that the height is accurate. So I decide to adjust the height because I'm going to add my throne chairs in front of this backdrop at the end of this to do kind of a head table setup. And I don't want the throne chairs, which are pretty tall, to cover my drapes that I've already worked so hard to design. So now we're going to get on to pleating. You pleat right at the level of your belly button. I just go back and forth between my hands. If you're interested in seeing a more detailed tutorial, let me know if enough of you are able to like or comment on that. Then I can have my husband maybe if we have if he has time to record a close up for you guys so you can really see how the pleats are done. They're not hard, they just take a little bit of work and there are different ways you can create your swags or your pleats for these designs. So this is one of them and I'll explain that here when I do the other side. So what you want to do is hold your fabric close to where you're going to tie it, like close to the pole where you're going to tie it on the top end and you're going to lift it up all the way and just gather in your hand. So you're going to make the back and forth pleats as you're gathering in your hand and that creates your swag. If you want something wider, you create looser pleats and that just makes gives you the wider look. You can actually see that what I did there is slightly wider and I'm adjusting by pulling the top of the right one to create a wider swag. That's how you adjust it. If I pull on the bottom, it's going to tighten it more. But I pulled the top to straighten that out a little more and I'm looking at the design I have so far. Now we're going to work on figuring out what we want to do with the rest of the drape. So what I decide to do is continue my crisscross fashion, but I don't want to eliminate my gold in the back. So I realized that what I did on the first side there wasn't thick enough. So I'm adding another panel to that one and my pipe cleaner was long enough that I could wrap that around to tie. Next, we're going to tie this other piece towards the bottom. So it'll still show the gold, but at least it gives you that kind of peekaboo effect. The gold is shiny enough that it'll still show through. I'm trying to decide if I should create that big of a soup or if I should tie it at the bottom. And I like how this looks. So we're gonna tie it, add that to what we did earlier and I just add another pipe cleaner over it. So that's that side. We're going to finish off by designing the right side and we'll be done with our backdrop. So continue watching and see how we set up the main table with the throne chairs. You may think we're done, but not yet. We need to finish our design by tucking in the excess fabric. This makes a huge difference in how elegant your design looks. I'm creating more pleats with my fingers as I tuck all that fabric in, as well as my main layer, the first layer with that white, with the gold, sorry. I'm tucking all that in in the back and creating more pleats as I do. You took time to make sure your, all your pleats are in place. So you wanna do the same and also where your two 
panels of fabric join you don't want to see a gap in between so i'm taking time you can see where the pleats are adding as i'm adjusting everything straightening it out so that my design looks very very rich and luxurious so we're pretty much done with i was gonna put the floral arrangement in front of it but I think this looks fine. I'm not going to do anything. I will do the separate video for the floral arrangement. Maybe on the side there. Just so I can get that out of the way. And it's done. But this is the final look guys. Love it. Kind of improvising. Uh, let's see. This one looks like it's a lot thicker than this side. So I might pull on that a little. Before I take some pictures. And then bring in this gold so that it covers that but that's about it either that or pull that out so that you can actually see that space and then i need to probably remove that gap right there but hopefully this tutorial helped you don't forget to subscribe like share thank you for the support